this episode, we will be painting and assembling the interior. For masking the specific interior, I will be using Elmer's White School Glue. This glue is an easy way to mask an entire area. I see a lot of modelers use tape, which I use a good amount of as well for masking. However, in this situation with the interior tub needing to have specific parts masked off and not the entire area, this would be more difficult and time consuming to accomplish with tape. So with the Elmer glue, I will do two coats in total with each coat fully drying in between. You don't want to lather the glue on as you only need thin coats. A simple amount in an area and spreading it around thinly will do the job. Coming up in the video, you will see how I remove the glue mask and how thick it actually is. I will also demonstrate how it provides a great masking line for paint like rattle cans and airbrushing. For the interior, we will be masking the entire area and then cutting out the mask for particular parts we need to paint semi-gloss black. On the passenger side, there are two platforms that need to be painted along with the center console, the driver's foot mat, and the rear portion of the interior. If you are enjoying the content I provide along with the tips and tricks in this video, please like and subscribe. Moving back to the door cards, here you can see after two coats the glue dries matte. Here's a door card, I already moved the masking to paint the insert semi-gloss black. You can see the mask did pull up some Tamiya paint, however this is fine as this is the part I am going to paint semi-gloss black anyways. Next time I will lay down a clear coat prior to placing Elmer's glue as a mask. I have not had this issue with Tamiya lacquer airbrush paints, Tamiya rattle cans, or any paint manufacturer I use within my arsenal. Let me show you how I remove the mask for the next door card insert. I am not using a typical number 11 blade, but a number 11 scalpel blade that doctors use. This is three times as sharp as a normal number 11 blade and you do not need to put any pressure at all. I utilize this same type of blade for bare metal foil, masking windows, and anything else that requires me to cut a very sharp and thin line. You can grab a pack of 100 for $10. I have a link in the description below to these blades along with all other products and tools I use for my builds. At the final turn on removing the mask, here we see the result and the mask itself that came off. Now if you are in a hurry on the model, which I hope no one is since being in a hurry allows for mistakes and Murphy's Law to occur, masking using tape would be a quicker solution. However, I would only use Tamiya tape or Aizu tape as they leave the cleanest line when painting even with a rattle can if you do light mist coats. You can find this tape in the description below of this video. With the mask being removed on both door cards and the interior for the parts I need to paint semi-gloss black, here's some footage of me painting with my Grex Tritium 0.3 needle at 20 psi using Tamiya X18 and my Aurograph 1530 dual fan paint booth. For the interior tank, I laid down Tamiya X2 and now I'm laying down a couple mist coats to build up the clear blue color. I'm not sure what tank this is, as the instructions did not indicate. Maybe it's an air tank of some sort? If you know what it is, and if blue should not have been the color to use, place your input down in the comments below. The instructions I believe called for silver, however I want to have something more to stand out in the interior than just a missed opportunity for an aesthetically pleasing part to help make the interior more lively than the colors Tamiya stated to use. For the seat, I initially used Scale Finish's Texture Black on the seat to give me the texture I wanted. I then used Scale Finish's Base White to cover the black, and then finally used Scale Finish's Color Match Castle Red for the seat. Scale Finishes does have texture white paint, however I only had black and didn't have enough time to wait for a shipment when I needed this build completed before I left to meet the rest of the guys in Phoenix, including James to reveal the finished build for Scale Model Experiments YouTube Mercedes GT3 group build.
Now let's start to assemble the interior. On the tank, I use metalizer stainless steel for the brackets, and I also use Tamiya red, blue, and black for accents of the knobs and other parts for the tank. We can see how nicely the masking using Elmer's glue came out for the interior and door cards. The mask was removed in all spots that were painted semi-gloss black. A semi-gloss clear coat was layered prior to assembly of the interior. Next up we have the pedals. These were hand painted using Model Master Metalizer Aluminum. The base of the pedals was hand painted with Tamiya X18 thinned with a few drops of paint retarder to allow the paint to level off and dry slower to help eliminate brush strokes. Roll cage padding is next and this was a little difficult to glue down as the parts are small and skinny and placed in spots that are a little too hard to reach sometimes. The instruction called to do this step prior to assembling all three parts of the roll cage, however I wanted no seam lines in the roll cage so I chose to do the steps in a different pattern. Installing the mirror is straightforward. Just make sure to place the dry transfer chrome mirror on before gluing the mirror in place. If you are enjoying this video so far, please give it a like. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to help out this channel. Subscribing is one of the best things YouTube can give viewers like you to do for free. There are three points on the cage that need to have glue in order to glue the cage down to the interior tub. This step right here is most satisfying as I know I'm about 50% complete with building the interior. The cockpit seat was not cleared as I wanted to leave that matte look that scale finishes base coats provide if you don't clear over to bring out the shine. The seat decals, I cut them out and left them on the decal paper to give it a more 3D look for being box stock. I got this tip from Paul's Messy Bench Models. You can find his channel in the link above in the top right corner of your screen. For the center console, I used about 13 different colors from Tamiya for the buttons. In GT3 cars, there are square colored boxes around the buttons, however that is extremely hard to do in scale so I opted for coloring the buttons instead for a similar effect. The dash was pretty straightforward, the instructions wanted gray, and I wanted semi-gloss black with gloss black accents. The GT3 wheel I use Small Master Metalizer Brass for the connecting pin between the steering wheel mount and the wheel. The wheel handles were painted in Tamiya Red. I wanted a matte finish but that didn't work as I intended using a matte clear. Buttons on the wheel were used with the same Tamiya paints that are used on the center console and the Mercedes Dry decal transfer set this wheel off just right. Installing the dash card was a bit tricky as it was off balance due to the steering wheel. You can see here where I had to maneuver the dash a few times to get it to work just right and fit within the holes.
cards. I use Mullen Master Chrome Silver for the door levers to give a little more depth to the door cards. Here's the final product for the interior portion of this build. There will be a few still photographs coming up at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not a subscriber, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to support this channel so I can provide more content and better content for everyone here. Subscribing doesn't cost you anything and it's free. It's one of the great things that YouTube allows viewers like you to do. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the final video for this build.